Hi everyone, my name is Chloe and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. So today is Monday, it's about 11.15 and today has been like torrential winds. It is so weird and it's like 70, 68 degrees right now and the high is like 75. For Kansas in August, I am not hating it, but it's so windy we're not going outside or anything. So we've just been playing inside. It's kind of gloomy, kind of just a chill day. So I finished Calm the Heck Down by Melanie Dale. And this book, I think, was just laugh out loud funny. I'm giving it four stars. It's just this woman's take on parenting, motherhood, everything it means to be a mom. Um, there are some things where she's she's a little privileged. Um, she has one child um, that was a preemie, and then her other two are adopted from different countries. One, I believe, was Russia, and one is somewhere in Africa. I can't remember where exactly, but, and she adopted out of her birth order. So she like had her son and then adopted the older one and then adopted the younger one. I think I can't remember, but she basically doesn't do things very conventionally. And yet they have figured out a way to make it work for them. And hearing just her thoughts on everything were really, really funny. I said in my last week's vlog that her and I are very different. She is like a yeller. And reading her thoughts and like things that have happened in her family made me laugh because they probably wouldn't happen in my family because I am not a yeller, but like doesn't mean you don't have the same exact thoughts. And I just thought it was funny. Um, she is also a Christian. And so she talks about how she incorporates faith into her family. And overall, I just, I really enjoyed the book and would definitely recommend it if you are a mom, dad, whatever in the midst of like kind of a rough parenting time or anything like that where you just need a laugh. Her kids, I think at the time of writing, were a little bit older than mine, but it applies to any time because kids are always a little crazy. So really enjoyed that one. Gave it four stars. Um, thank you to NetGalley and to Adria Books for letting me read that early. I had also talked about, um, I wasn't sure what the publication date was, but I have confirmed it is December 8th. It has moved around a few, a few times because of the pandemic. And Goodreads, I think, says August sometime, but it, it is actually coming out December 8th. So there's a little bit of a wait if you want it, but I know you can pre-order it like anywhere. So um, if you're interested, go to NetGalley. Well, I think it's been archived on NetGalley, but wait for it. Check it out. Pre-order it. It was really good. So next, I think I'm going to pick up Sisters by Kelly Coates Gilbert. And I'm not even sure where I got this, but it is on Kindle Unlimited as well. So I can read it. Um, I've really been just wanting to physically read. But with my life and my kids and all that kind of stuff, my e-reader or my phone, I always have that with me. And so it's a little bit easier to like read on my phone while I'm feeding Annie or um, just in the little minute moments here and there. So I think I'm going to read this. It's just over 300 pages. I don't know really much about it. It's a women's fiction about three sisters living in this ski lodge called Sun Valley Lodge in Idaho, I think. And I don't know, just sounds cute. I don't even know where I got this copy. I'm, uh, I can't remember exactly where I got it, but it's on my shelves and my goal has been to read off my shelves. So I'm going to try to read this one. Um, tomorrow I'm starting a buddy read of some Christmas stuff with Sarah and Bree from Steeped in Books and Falling for Romance respectively. And if you did not see the announcement, we are starting a book club. So this buddy read is not for the book club. We just all have two different Christmas books on NetGalley. So we are going to read those together um, here at the beginning of September and that's my plan. So I'm going to try to knock this out um, for sure by tomorrow night at the latest so then I can start that other one tomorrow night. So um, also if you didn't see my last vlog I have kind of been like in a reading rut where I'm just like I found myself like how fast can I get through these books and just kind of like getting through them to get through them and then it takes the joy out of reading and so I've been doing a lot of podcast listening um, a lot of YouTube watching for the first time in like ever I'm within three days like I have my watch list is just three days old and newer and that feels so good and so I've really just been having kind of a different balance between um, how much I'm reading versus how much I'm doing other stuff and it feels really good. Um, so I don't know what this week will look like, if it'll be a lot of books, a couple books. I can almost guarantee I'll get the two Christmas ones done and this one, I hope. But I don't know. We will see. So um, the rest of the day, my mom is here right now. She's downstairs with Ainsley. Annie's sleeping. Um, like I said, it's like almost lunchtime already. I don't Where does the day go? So we are just going to hang out and just kind of get through the day. So that's the plan. I will check in later. 
Hey everyone, it's Tuesday at like 1030 and I'm just getting on to let you know that I made it seven pages into Sisters last night and I just was not in the mood for reading at all yesterday. So I did everything but and then last night I listened to some podcasts, watched some YouTube videos and just did not want to read. So I did make myself and I am really glad that I'm doing that more like not not pushing it. So um, that being said, this morning we are going to start our buddy read, um, Sarah from Steeped in Books and Bree from Falling for Romance. The three of us were starting a, um, a buddy read of Home for the Holidays by Sarah Richardson, and so I just decided to put sisters away for um, the rest of the week or something. It, there was nothing wrong with it. I was really intrigued by it. I just didn't feel like reading yesterday, so I'll read that later in the week. And instead, I started Home for the Holidays by Sarah Richardson, and I am loving it. So I've been in this epic like slump kind of lately where I'm just not in the mood, and I'm just trying to power through things. And like, I have a ton of books on ebook and stuff, so I always have my phone by me. I could easily um, read while I nurse, and I just don't because I'm not in the mood. Well, this book has me in the mood. So this book is about three sisters who go, um, they're all going home-ish to to Denver where their aunt is because she calls and, or writes them a letter and says she's sick, she's not doing well, she needs to come um, see, they need to come see her. So they all go and we're learning about all of their stories. So this is like my bread and butter. It just rotates through the three sisters and so we get perspectives from each of them. And one of them is, um, she's like, I don't know if she's divorced or just separated, but her husband left her for somebody else. And so he took the kids on a vacation with this other woman. So she's really down and out about that. Then there's, and she, I think is a, I don't remember what she does. She might be a, the baker. I don't know. One of them is a baker. Then the next one, she is engaged to this guy, but the guy seems kind of douchey. Their relationship doesn't seem great. There's definitely some more going on that we don't know there, and she's like a designer. So whatever. She is another sister. And then the third sister has a husband who is very like devoted to her, it seems like, but they are struggling a whole lot with infertility and they have come to an impasse where IVF is not working for them and they're kind of out of options. And so um, do they keep doing it or not? One says yes, one says no. And so is this going to be the thing that ends their marriage? I don't know. So marriage in general is pretty rocky in this book and um, it's very hard hitting. But so I like we know I am not a crier in books and Magnolia, the one who's dealing with infertility. Her first chapter had me like with a lump in my throat and I didn't cry because that I, it's just very, very, very hard for me to cry. But her storyline may get me by the end of this book because I think, I don't know if Sarah Richardson herself has struggled with infertility, but the feelings that she was talking about and like all of the mixed emotions that come with negative pregnancy test after negative pregnancy test and the excitement of trying versus like the dread of seeing another negative is just so relatable, so relatable. She just nails the feelings that you have. And like, as, as I've now read a little bit more and as her chapters go on, I just, and so many times like picturing I was there, like we, you know, we tried for months and months and months and got negative after negative after negative. And just those feelings are, are hard. They're very hard. And, um, it definitely can come in your marriage. And I just, I loved seeing that. And I'm like, it's very, all stories are pretty hard hitting, but I like the scenery of this town. It's like Juniper Falls or Juniper, Juniper Springs. I can't remember the name of the town, um, but it's around Denver. And like the scenery, I'm getting very much Stars Hollow, Gilmore Girls vibes from like the, the atmosphere and the small town. Like there's a gazebo with a massive tree and <sighs> I'm just loving it. So this may turn into a Christmas vlog because we are doing um, this book and then the Sarah Morgan Christmas book. Um, both of them are on NetGalley. And we, the three of us are going to be reading those back to back. And then I also have one more on NetGalley. Um, so I think this is going to turn into like a Christmas in September. <laughs> um, September is like really the month that kicks off um, like publishing of, of Christmas books. And so I, I just am so excited, I guess. I, I need to kick it off. So I don't know um, if I get through these three books early. I don't know what I'll do, but that's neither here nor there. Um, this morning... 
we just got up, all the girls both got up early and it's cloudy and gloomy again today. And like, I haven't had a day where I, it's gloomy with a good book in forever. So now like all I want to do is sit and read. But instead, um, we did exercise class. We played, um, the exercise class I did today used a BOSU ball. And if you don't know what that is, it's like a half, um, half exercise ball. It's flat on the bottom and then it's like rounded and Ainsley loves those things and they're so good for balance. And so she's playing with that and, um, that's just what we've been doing this morning. And now Jeremy says he can take a little break. So I'm going to try to film my August wrap up and a couple other videos. And that's the plan for the day. We don't have anything um, going on this afternoon. I did get some new like craft supplies. So um, depending on how the day goes, I may be doing a craft project with Ainsley. If I do, of course, I'll show it. And that's everything. So we will check in later. Hey, everyone. It is like maybe one o'clock or so on Wednesday. I'm so bad at like keeping track of the days, especially um, Jeremy had a weird day today. He had a physical this morning, so he didn't like go to work like normal. Um, so it was just kind of a weird day. And yes, my daughter um, liked to share her lunch on my sleeve today. So this jacket will be washed, but it is a weirdly cool day. It's supposed to be 90 by the afternoon, but it's just like starting really slow and steady. And I feel like fall is here and I love it. So, um, I finished home for the holidays by Sarah Richardson last night. And unfortunately I'm giving it three stars. I just, so it started off so strong for me. It started off, like I said, the three sisters. Um, one is, in, is she is divorced and her husband is taking the kids somewhere for vacation over Christmas. Then the other one is about to get married, but things don't feel quite right. And her mother-in-law is like very involved, like too involved. And then the third one is um, she, her and her husband are struggling with infertility to the point that now they've like exhausted their options and they are not in agreement about where to proceed. So those are the three sisters. They get this letter from their aunt saying, hey, it's going to be my last Christmas. Come come to this place. You come to the inn in Denver. So they all go. And I loved seeing the town. Like I said before, I think I got major Stars Hollow vibes from Gilmore Girls. Like it was just so cute. You could see it. Loved it. Okay. Well, then as the book goes on, all three women have romances that kind of just felt like they were thrown in just for the sake of romance and they all were there regardless of relationship status. And I mean, I don't really like that. Um, and then like really the rest of the book just felt underdeveloped and there is a, um, bless you baby. There is a trope that I hate and, um, I'm sure you know what it is if you have followed my channel for any length of time. And it was so, poorly done in my opinion that it was offensive um and it just kind of made a joke of um a situation i am being very very vague because it is spoilery if if you know if i get too specific but if you want to know more of my thoughts um drop a comment down below and i will be happy to share them i just don't want to spoil it for everyone if they don't want to know so I just feel like that trope really ruined it for me um and just the whole like I not like laughability but it was kind of just like an aside and it like it just did not work for me and the romance situations they were all very very underdeveloped for me I didn't feel like really anything um to most of them I just feel like it could have used a lot more development and I wanted to see at least one of them have a story that was about them and not about them finding love or finding which guy to go with or whatever and all of them, including the aunt, has a romance. And, yeah, I mean, I love romance, but I just didn't feel like it was, like, authentic in some of the situations. So, three stars. Um, cute promise. Like, it had promise. Cute premise. Had promise. But it just kind of fell flat for me. I wanted more of a women's fiction story. And from the beginning, that's what I thought I was getting. And then it just turned into kind of a hodgepodge. And it's like right about 300 pages. So I feel like it honestly could have used like 50 more pages to just develop things. Um, yeah, that is my thought. So 
Next, I'm gonna read The 12 Dogs of Christmas, I think is what it's called, and I am just so excited. Um, this is another one that I have on, on NetGalley. The Home for Holidays is a NetGalley arc. It comes out September 22nd from Forever Publishing, so um, keep your eyes out for that if you want to give it a shot. And then this 12 Dogs of Christmas, I think is October. It might also be the end of September. It's either end of September or early October. Um, and all of these are on NetGalley. So if you are very interested, you can go request them and give them your own opinion. So um, Brie from Falling for Romance has read 12 Dogs of Christmas and said it was really cute. So I have high hopes. I just barely, barely started it. But now Ainsley has um, requested to watch NSYNC music videos. But instead, um, she was walking to the bathroom like a ballerina. So I turned on a toddler ballerina dance class. And she's doing that and coloring for a little bit before nap. And so we're going to um, do some dancing. And then I might sit on the couch here and do some reading um, if, I can, if I can do that. So that's the plan for today. I will check in when I have more thoughts. Um, I didn't check in at all yesterday because the day just got away from me. I don't even know. I tried the co-sleeping naps and it blew up, did not work. And so then um, that was just a cluster. And then I had a mops meeting all night. And so um, we had to like, we're just, it's a mess trying to figure out how to meet and when to meet and where to meet and how to keep everybody safe. And yet, um, like still meet and be beneficial and not be an obligation. And our town has had a very drastic increase in cases. And um, I think the schools are gonna be going fully remote. They are currently half remote, half hybrid. Like whoever wants to be remote can be remote and whoever wants to be hybrid, they go two days a week and they're home three days a week. And I think it's about to go all virtual. And so it's just trying to figure that out when we're talking about moms that have kids is tough. So um, yeah, I didn't check in at all, but today I might, I don't know. We, we might also go to the farmer's market because we love doing that. And Saturday it was super rainy, so we didn't go. But I'm also trying to make like a an eggplant um, pasta bake thing tonight. So it's kind of a more like, time time inclusive um dinner so and the farmer's market is four to seven so i don't know that's a lot to say um i don't know what's going on i made a massive lunch brunch because jeremy couldn't eat because he had to have blood work so he's fasting so i made um turnovers and cheesy eggs and parfaits for lunch and so now i'm kind of like mm, do i really want to cook like a fancy uh dinner tonight i don't know so we'll see it may end up being p and j night <laughs> but that's it i will check in later hey everyone it is thursday um at like 10 something ainsley ate like a two hour breakfast this morning so my plans for the day got a little wonky because we were planning to go um, play at my parents house and they've got a really big backyard and lots of different toys um, So the plan was to go over there so I could get some stuff done But then this two-hour lunch or breakfast now it's like only an hour and a half till lunch So do I want to mess with it? I, you know, whatever. So we are playing outside instead um, We have been reading a lot of Berenstain Bears lately and it seems like those kids play hopscotch a lot And so Ainsley has been asking for a hopscotch board or whatever in the driveway and so this morning um, that's what I did. I drew her hopscotch and kind of taught her how to do it. And so that's fun. She's just such a big kid. Sorry, my neighbor came by and this one started losing it. So um, just quick update on reading. I am about halfway through the 12 Dogs of Christmas and it is so, so cute. Uh, I'm sorry, it's nothing like exceptional, but it's about this town... Um, the funding gets cut for the animal shelter. So it's a girl that is there helping her grandparents run the animal shelter. And then like a guy who's on like the city commission or the city council or whatever. And he's kind of the one that did the budget cut and he feels bad. And so he is helping her um, try to get all of the dogs adopted. So they're featuring one and one like a week or per newsletter or whatever. And so it's the 12 dogs of Christmas trying to get them all adopted. So super cute, really enjoying it. Um, I am going to keep playing out here, feed this one. Just keep on keeping on, almost Friday. So 
So you guys, the sun is something else. Um, but I was just taking a walk with the girls and came home and have the best book mail ever. Um, Anita, you are the kindest soul ever. Um, Anita sent me Wish You Were Here by Renee Carlino. And I have been wanting to read this book forever and it's been on my Amazon wish list, and I just have not bit the bullet and bought it. And Anita sent it to me as a, just a surprise. And I am so touched and like, I feel like crying because that is just so sweet. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Anita. I'm gonna reach out to you on Instagram, um, but I also wanna say it here, like, thank you. That is just the biggest day maker. And um, now I want to do nothing but go read Renee Carlino. Obviously, I'm trying to read like Christmas Net Galley stuff, and I just wanna put it all aside for this book. So thank you so, 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 so much. Um, I cannot wait to read it. So. That is, um, I just had to get on and say that because um, just in case, Anita, you check this before you check Instagram, um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we just finished um, a walk and now it's lunchtime, but like I kind of snacked all morning. Ainsley ate that super long lunch, so nobody's really hungry and I just got Annie to sleep. So we might stay outside for a little bit. I don't really know. Um, I don't know. So we will just see how the morning goes or how the rest of the day goes. Naps have been a mess lately, so I'm really hoping tonight is good and um, or today, this afternoon, whatever. Um, it's such a nice day. I just want to stay outside. So that is everything. I have not read a word. I'll check in when I do. Hey, everyone. So it is um, Friday, thank goodness, at like... 10 30 almost I don't even know and um, we are just outside it's like actually kind of chilly if you see I'm wearing a sweatshirt um, we it's it was like 51 degrees this morning and now I think it's in the 60s but um, just weird and it's gonna be like 90 degrees by the late afternoon so it is a very weird day and like Kansas it's not uncommon to do like 40 50 degree swings throughout the day and I hate that weather like it's just it's so hard to prepare for and it's like you're cold and then you're hot and it just gives me a headache a lot of times and it's just really weird so um, we are outside playing hopscotch and just um, roaming around not really doing anything and um, I thought I'd get on an update because I finished the 12 dogs of Christmas last night so thank you again to NetGalley and Forever Publishing for allowing me to read this one as well um, and I'm giving it three and a half stars I thought it was super cute it's about Allie and Ben Allie goes back to this um, small town to help her grandparents run this dog or animal shelter. And she gets there and finds out that the city council is cutting funding to the um, animal shelter because it need, they need it for, to fix a roof somewhere else. And so um, she goes and Ben, it was the swing boat that um, decided to cut the funding. So they instantly have like this adversarial bantery relationship and then he feels really bad and he, so he decides to help her and take on this project called the 12 dogs of Christmas where they take a picture and feature um, the dogs in like the local newspaper or newsletter or something and try to get them all met with their perfect match to get them adopted so um, there's like a Christmas festival parade thing um, that was just very atmospheric I thought it was it was a very good Christmassy feel book and so I know a lot of times people and myself included complain about um, Christmas books not being Christmassy enough and I feel like this one did a really good job of being Christmas both of the ones I've read have done a pretty good job of um, like setting that cozy holiday stage so I really like that um the only reason I'm giving it three and a half is because I really just like it's not that memorable um I think it would be a great Hallmark movie so Hallmark <laughs> I know you're watching this right um please adapt this one because um, I talked to some friends while I was reading it and like I was like well you know it's the type of book that I'm not sure that I like want to spend six hours with or however long it takes to read it but like watching a two-hour movie would be wonderful and um, just because it's not one you're gonna remember forever it's not life-changing but it's really really cute so um, and then my other complaint is just that Ben is, he's a single dad to his niece, Astrid. Um, 
and he's like very very protective of that and doesn't want to date for that reason which is very understandable but like the lengths they go to to hide everything from the small town seems a little extreme like um of course it's a tiny town so they're the talk of the town like are they going to match up there's this like obvious chemistry yada 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 and that's great um but they like go, they are very 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 sneaky about even having conversations with each other and i'm like mm. You know, like, you guys just need to tell everybody to shove it. <laughs> and so that was frustrating. But um, it, it's neither here nor there. That is somewhat realistic for a small town. So, um, yeah, that is it. So yesterday, I don't remember even when I checked in, but um, we played outside. And then we ate lunch. And then um, I, so nap time is still just a mess. So Jeremy helped me get Ainsley down. And then I fed Annie and got her down, like, 45 minutes later and so then I was like okay well I should have at least half hour or 45 minutes by myself so um I turned on sister sister and read my book because I am the type that needs background noise um just all the time and like shows like sister sister and things that I have seen every episode multiple times I just want to watch them over and over and like they're really nice to have in the background because I don't really need to pay attention because I know what happened and so I turned that and that is new to Netflix and so I turned that on yeah and um watched that while I read so that was really fun and then it lasted not very long though because then Ainsley woke up and it was just a mess so so today Annie decided that four o'clock was a good time to start the day and so I um have had kind of a rough morning just like an overly emotional morning because I think I slept like a total of three or four hours like in one or two hour chunks and so um, I am just really, really tired today and Jeremy's out of town today. And so it is just kind of one of those days, but luckily I feel like the girls have been like exceptionally good today. So, um, feeling a lot better than I did early, this, early this morning. And, um, yeah, so now I'm going to start, um, Sarah Morgan's Christmas one. I can't remember what it's called, but I'm going to start this. This is another Betty Read with Sarah from Steeped in Books, well, uh, from not Steeped in Books anymore. She is the bookish knitter, which I just love that name change. It fits her so well. So, um, the bookish knitter and then Brie from Falling for Romance on Instagram. And, um, we are doing this Betty Read as well. So this is another net galley read and, um, I'm so excited because Sarah Morgan, I feel like does everything well after that first, um, Sarah Richardson being kind of a flop and something that made me really salty. Um, and then the second one being really, it was really cute. There was nothing wrong with it. So it wasn't bad, but I am like ready for a Sarah Morgan. So I'm hoping it's great. We will see. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't think so. Again, uh, Anita, I'm going to just talk about you every day because this morning too, I came downstairs and was like, I just can't believe somebody was so kind to send me a book just because like that is just so kind. So again, Anita, thank you. Um, and like, I'm such a dodo. So I am on Instagram, but I'm not good at it. And I just figured out like a couple months ago how to do stories. And so that's like all the rage. So I'm doing all, which by the way, like reels, reels just came out and I have no idea what that is. And so I'm like, shoot, I just figured out stories and now stories probably aren't even cool anymore. And so whatever. But my point is I do stories as frequently as I can. And so I thanked her in a story and then she like private messaged me and I was like, duh, I forgot you could do private message on Instagram too. So I am like an 85 year old trapped in a 30 year old body. I just, technology is hard for me. Social media is not my jam. So, um, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram if you want. It'll be, it'll be mediocre at best. So that's it. I will check in later.
Hey everyone, it is Saturday at like 1.30 and I'm just sitting outside because I am one of those people who gets so cold all the time and being inside and like for some reason eating always makes me cold and normally I don't like, I don't know, I don't care if my food is super hot so I guess I'm eating like room temperature food. I don't know, but like for some reason eating makes me like extra cold so then I come outside and warm up because it's so hot here so I'm just sitting out on the deck um, about to feed Annie and put Ainsley down for a nap and all that kind of fun stuff. So um, yesterday I we're you know, I was just so tired and so I was like trying to find things to fill the time and so I made a crocodile game for Ainsley. So I got um, some clothespins and painted them and then um, put like squares on a piece of cardboard and so she could use like fine motor skills to s squeeze the clothespins and chomp onto the color and match the colors. So I was like, okay, cool, fine motor skills, check, uh, matching, check, like all sorts of good things. And I was thinking like that would be something that she could just do and I could sit there and read and chill while she did it. And um, I didn't anticipate the learning curve of clothespins with a two-year-old. Um, there was a few pinched fingers, a few tears, and then we ended up kind of doing it together and she figured it out and um, it ended up working out okay, but she needed, like, she is a very, 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 very cautious kid. And so after once or twice being pinched, she was like, nah, -uh. and she wouldn't do it unless I like held the spring part and then she could do it. And so now today she is doing it independently. So it just was a learning curve that I didn't really anticipate, but it was still fun and it killed like an hour. So if you guys have little ones at home um, that might be interested in that, she loves sorting and matching things. And so um, like that part was fun for her too. And you can buy colored clothespins on Amazon and like I'm sure in craft stores and that kind of stuff. So really easy, fun um, thing. And like I said, today she's still playing with it. And so that is great. Um, then our other source of entertainment yesterday was we had a little hummingbird stuck in our garage and poor little thing was like up, um, in the ceiling and, uh, I didn't know, like it was flying around so fast that I was like, is, what is that? Cause it was just tiny. And so I was like, is that a massive wasp or is that a hummingbird? And so Jeremy gets home and he's like, yeah, they, um, typically like can't fly down. And so it would just like go fly around until it exhausted itself and so I'm like okay well let's help it so um we he was like you know what would be perfect is if we had like a pool net well we don't have a pool so we did not have a pool net and so he uh engineered his things and um put a, a box on the end of a broomstick and then like caught the bird against the ceiling and then slid some cardboard to like make it an enclosed box and then got it freed. But it was probably like a 45 minute or hour long process just trying to get this bird out of our garage. And I don't know why it wouldn't just, I mean, I don't know. I never knew that, that they like can't fly down. And um, it was just such a little thing. So I saved the bird and that was really exciting and entertaining for a lot of the afternoon. So that is, um, really what we did yesterday. And then today, um, we were going to go to the farmer's market and all of that. And so Ainsley was eating breakfast and she like breakfast is one of her, like is her biggest meal, I would say usually. And so sometimes it takes forever. Like she'll just be like, she's not a fast eater. So she'll just be like grazing forever. And so Annie was starting to get tired. So I was like, well, I don't want to like swaddle her, or get her to sleep in the house. So I put her in the stroller and took her for a walk while Ainsley finished with Jeremy. And then we went to Farmer's Market and then I was like, well, what what can we do today? And um, my kids love balloons, both of them. And so I had this idea like a few days ago, and I, I don't know why I'm even telling you this because it's so embarrassing, but um, of for Annie, put taking balloons and like tying the strings around her ankles. And so when she's kicking all the time, she can like see the balloons and watch them. 
And so I thought that would be fun. And then Ainsley could play with them after whatever. So I was like, I guess I need to go to the Dollar Tree and get some balloons. Because if you haven't gone to the Dollar Tree to get like helium balloons, they are a dollar. And at the grocery store and stuff, they're like $4 each. So um, I was like, you know, I guess I need to go there. And then I was like, wait, I don't need to go there. I have, because I bought um, like a pack of 100 balloons for like $6. Um, around Ainsley's birthday because we I blew up like 50 of them to have the floor covered um, the morning of her birthday and so I'm like I have balloons I don't need to go to the Dollar Tree so I go and I blow up two balloons and then I'm like hmm, how am I gonna tie the string on I guess I'll just set them on the counter and tie the string on and so like I do one and then I'm like wait if I set it on the counter this is not gonna float above her head. Like the helium part is kind of critical. So then I, I felt like a dodo because obviously that was not gonna work um, for Annie. So I like put them in a closet and thought Ainsley um, would get a few minutes of entertainment out of them. This was a couple days ago. And so then I um, had like 10 or 15 minutes to get her entertained before dinner. She was trying to be all in the kitchen and it was just hard. So I was like, hey, go um, in the closet. There's a surprise. So she found these two balloons and I'm not kidding. She played with those balloons for hours. Like she didn't want to eat dinner. She just wanted to play like hot potato with the balloons all night, all the next day, all today. And so, um, yeah, my kids go crazy for balloons. So I bought the helium balloons um, and Ainsley came in and picked them out and she wore her little Mickey Mouse mask and it was just so cute. She did so good and like acted like such a grown up because I told her she couldn't come in with me unless she did, wore the mask. And so she did awesome. And she picked a smiley face and then one with all sorts of sports balls. And then I got a third so she would have one while Annie played. And so she picked um, a butterfly one, I think. So then I tied them on Annie's ankles and she loved it. And Ainsley wanted the other one on her ankles. So they just laid there and kicked around for a long time this morning and after we got home. And um, it was a good time. So that is everything we've been doing. Also, I have read maybe like 35% of One More for Christmas by Sarah Morgan. And so far, I'm really liking it. It is definitely women's fiction so far, and it is very slow paced. But that being said, I'm enjoying it. So this one is about a woman who, she is some sort of like, I think she's an author um, and she writes like self-help bo self books. She's uber famous, whatever. Well, she has these two estranged daughters. And so something happens to the woman. Her name is Gail, I think. And she like falls and hits her head. And so she's in the hospital and says, call my daughters. Well, nobody knows she has daughters. And so her daughters come and like one of them has gotten married and had a kid and didn't tell her. And like they have not spoken at all in five years. And so um, they're both there by her bedside while she's injured. And um, long story short, they end up spending the holidays together. So I'm at 35% and so far it has been very, very, very light on the Christmas. And we are just learning a lot about the girls, their relationship. Um, they have a really good relationship with each other. So that is great. And we don't know, like something happened five years ago, some sort of blow up that ended the relationship between the mother and the daughters. And I don't know what happened. And I'm really intrigued. I could see the mom being um, one of those people who's like, like the one daughter that has a kid, she is a stay at home mom and won't admit that to her mom because her mom is like, you need to be a doctor or a lawyer or some really high achieving um, career. And so the fact that she's a stay at home mom, she feels like her mom will not support that. And I can see how her mother would be a difficult person to get along with, but she's using this, um, like injury as it's kind of a wake up call to her of the fact that like, Hey, she has a four or five year old granddaughter that she had no idea. Like that's how bad things had gotten. And, um, like the mom before would not put up any Christmas tree or anything. Cause she thought it was just a frivolous extra expense and wouldn't do anything like that. And so now she is different and changing her ways and trying to reconnect with her daughters. So I'm really liking it. As the mom of two girls, 
Um, I like this book is kind of stressing me out because I have talked to some a lot of girlfriends about their kind of issues with their mom and um, obviously there's a lot of issues between these girls and their mom and I'm like gosh right now my girls are two and two months and so of course they think I'm cool but like I really really hope someday they're not talking to their friends about their mommy issues <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen but I am really like wanting to stop time when they still think I'm cool so that is everything um, I think that's going on today um, Annie I think is going through a growth spurt and I don't know if you look at different like books and charts and that kind of stuff there's like three month uh, growth spurt four month sleep regression five month this or that like all these excuses for why your kid is not doing what you want them to do I guess and I don't know so I don't know if it's a sleep regression or a growth spurt or what but she last night woke up every like two to two and a half hours and so um, it was a long night and so now I think I'm gonna feed her and then maybe take Ainsley with me and just go lay down um, because you might think like don't you want to nap by yourself and the answer is no because when I am like when I've got Ainsley in bed with me I can't do any like I can't play games on my phone I can't like just be scrolling around my phone wasting time keeping myself awake and like with when she's in bed with me I will either read until I go to sleep or I'll just go to sleep and so I feel like my naps are way more effective when I've got her with me so I might try it I might also just say no I want to be by myself <laughs> I don't know we'll see how it goes because it's already getting kind of late and by the time I feed Annie um, if she's melting down I'll just tell Jeremy to take her upstairs so that is everything. Um, really long clip. Thank you for watching and staying tuned. And um, I'll let you know when I finish one more for Christmas. everyone. It is Sunday um, at like 5.30 and I just got off a Zoom call with Sarah and Bree and we were talking about um, the choices for October, November, and December's book club. So if you haven't um, gone on Goodreads and joined it, I will link it down below. Go join and vote and I am so excited. We had such a hard time picking. We picked three for each month and we had such a hard time doing that. So really excited for that. And you guys, really other exciting thing that I'm like Oh, I just I get so emotional about it, but um, this one, this book, Things Jolie Needs to Do Before She Bites It by Carrie Winfrey. Um, Antonella sent me this, and Antonella does not have a channel, but needs to, and she is just the kindest person, and I love talking to her about books in the comments. Um, I always check her on Goodreads as one of my go-tos because her and I, I think, have pretty similar opinions, and she knows I love Carrie Winfrey, and I think this is maybe her second book ever, and it is a YA about a girl who has a um, disease that is like basically causes her to be very uh, like have a really strong underbite and so she's about to have a surgery to repair that but she's really scared of dying in that surgery so these are all the things she wants to do before she bites it um the little play on words with her disability and just every, I just can't wait I think this cover is so cool and I am so excited to see what Carrie Winfrey did, um like has done in the past because I love the Tom Hanks series so Antonella, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Getting two surprises this week has been ridiculously crazy. I feel so undeserving and just so grateful. Um, so thank you, Antonella. You are wonderful and you need to start a channel. So um, let's all peer pressure Antonella and to get her to start a channel. But um, otherwise, today we went for a walk. We did church. We... Um, I don't even know what else we did. We saw a hilarious sign, a uh, political sign. So I think I put a picture of that in. Um, really, we just have kind of hung out and done all the things. So now I'm going to go make dinner and um, it's Sabbath snacks night. So it's just going to kind of be random stuff and I'm so excited for it. And that's everything. So um, I did finish One More for Christmas by Sarah Morgan. And I think I'm going to give it three stars. I have not written my review or like really had time to sit and think about it, but I think I'm going to give it three stars. It was again about a woman who, um, she is like this media personality, this famous lady for writing kind of self-help books. And she has two estranged daughters. And so then she falls and it's kind of like, um, I have seen it compared to like a Christmas Carol, 
um, where she's the Grinch, or the, the Grinch, the Scrooge, and she comes back and, like, sees kind of where she's at, and so it's, but, I mean, it's not, it's not a retelling by any means. Anyway, so she changes her tune after this accident and decides to reconnect with her daughters, and they end up going to Scotland for a for the Christmas vacation. One of them has a daughter and a husband that she had never told them about or told her mom about. And so the little girl is there. The husband's there. Um, the other daughter, she owns a company that like sets up dream travels vacations specifically for the holiday. So she's going to Scotland to scout out this new place. And so she has a little romance with the guy that leads, like that owns the place. And, um, overall it was really cute, but it was really, really, really slow and not that much happened in it. And, um, it's definitely, I would say more of a family story than a romance. Like there is the romance between her and the guy in Scotland, but I think the true story is about the mother and daughters and them coming back to terms and like, um, understanding why the mom was the way she was and all of their family history and that kind of stuff. Um, definitely more of a family story. If you ask me, the Christmas was, um, more prevalent as the book went on, but it was not super heavy in Christmas. Um, but there was some of it. So, Overall, um, this is sort of disappointing for my expectations of a Sarah Morgan Christmas because I loved Wedding in December and I loved Christmas Sisters, but this one was good. It was just very, very slow and definitely more of a women's fiction than a romance. So, and that's not a bad thing. I actually prefer women's fiction to romance, so that's not a bad thing. It just was very, very slow and um, I think it's being marketed as a romance and so just want everybody to know that that is not necessarily what you're getting. So, um, that is it for this vlog. Thank you so much for watching. If you have watched all of this, it's kind of a longer one. I've been kind of chatty. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, Anita, Antonella, you guys have made my week and I'm just so grateful for your kindness and generosity and for your watching and just supporting this channel somehow. And you guys, I'm so grateful and, um, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thanks to everybody for watching and we'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.